Hello everybody. Uh, uh, I'm Chetan Kukari. I work for Western Digital. Uh, uh, so this talk is about creating block layer tracing extension. Uh, this work has been going on for the last couple of months. I've been posting some patches. Uh, I've been active in Linux block layer on the Linux block layer mailing list and NBME mailing list. Submitting patches to both the mailing list and modifying the kernel. Uh, this is just basic uh, outline what we're going to cover. It's going to be a short session, like an update of ongoing work. Uh, we're going to go through a quick uh, review about the Linux kernel block layer tracing, then current problems with the tracing framework, uh, overview of the block extension that we're trying to get into kernel. Uh, we won't be going into any design details uh, or usage of the block trace or the block there. If you have any questions, just feel free to grab me after after session. Uh, okay, uh, so let's get into an overview of block trace. Is it visible to everybody? Okay. So you can see from this. Uh, this diagram which is available pretty much everywhere when you start tracing for the kernel. So block trace kind of sits below either file system or below all the managers depending on what exactly you're doing uh, below the VFS there. And this is where um, in the block layer we have uh, different types of traces uh, which generates the data and just emits the data to the user space. Uh, so I'm just going to use the existing slide deck, uh, which is from 2006, old, but nothing's been done to be very honest uh, in block trace code. As I started reading the code, it's just super old to me. Uh, so let's go through this. So what is block trace? So block trace is a way to just identify different operations going into Linux kernel block layer starting from creating a BIO, which is a, which is a <coughs> single unit of I operation, which holds pages and committing it in a request and then going into the low level drivers and then completing the request from the DMA. Uh, so this is, um, I think everybody's aware, let's just go over this. So you have application, then you have file systems, and then you have page cache if you are doing the preferred IO and then it goes to the block layer, and then you do uh, MD or DM based on if you're using these frameworks, and then it goes to the underlying devices in case of SCSI, it goes to the low level SCSI drivers and completes the DMA. In case of NVMe, uh, you don't have any mid layer, you just go from block layer to PCIe, and you perform PRP or HDL mapping, and you just get the completion community back, and you go over it, and then you uh, update the block there, and the block there is the file system, or if it's a director, just uh, to the uh, event. So block trace uh, is a framework. It has two parts. Uh, one part is in the kernel, which uh, is just a huge chunk of one file. Uh, under kernel trace, blktrace.c, it manages everything from the events and to the filters. Uh, the user space code is quite a bit. It has a collection of different utilities. Uh, uh, block bars, block trace, BGT, IO watcher, uh, block trace verifier, and whatnot. So this just talks about what are the different feature, uh, different feature list. Uh, it provides detailed block layer information concerning individual IO, uh, merging, uh, remapping, uh, BIO splitting, that sort of information. Uh, this IO is going to sleep. So this is the, uh, pretty much the, all, all the list. A request allocation from the request queue, whether the uh, IO is sleeping, if it's getting requeued, uh, merging, and then, uh, sorry, uh, requeuing. If the driver is busy, and then it just requeues the request again. In that case, and a bunch of different operations like split, bounce, and remap. Uh, so this is, this is the diagram, which I found pretty, pretty much consistent with the existing code. Um, you just issue a bunch of the IOs, you go to the standard IO chain, submit the IO, which is typically issued by a VFS there. Uh, 
and then you have retail channels which starts emitting the data to the user space, a block trace, which you end up configuring using uh, issuing the uh, IOCTOS uh, into the kernel, and then you create all this setup, and then data emitted by the block trace uh, used by the block parse, and it gives you nice output uh, in the form of string which we can understand. Uh, so this is just simple uh, output when you issue some some IOs and you can see that. So first couple, first column has major number, minor number. Uh, second column has number of CPU and then the sequence number, uh, and the timestamp, and the PID, and then you have different events, uh, like uh, submission, completion, uh, or remapping, or if it's if it about to sleep or queue insertion, things like that. Uh, and then uh, you can see that uh, sector numbers and then followed by the process which is issuing uh, those, those items. And this is just a summary that you get, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, write submitted, uh, or CPU details, or device details, average throughput, and uh, write submitted. So this is just super quick overview of the block there. Uh, the problem that we have uh, as a storage company, I have a progressive digital, uh, that we are adding a bunch of new requests to existing kernel. Uh, these requests have a special meaning uh, as opposed to the requests that we have seen in the last pretty much a decade or so. Uh, I've added uh, request OP write zeros, uh, I've added uh, zone reset all, uh, and now there is this new uh, ZNS, the zone namespace, uh, is a new type of namespace coming into NVMe, and we are going to add four more requests. Uh, along with that, uh, block layer tracing framework lacks an ability to track the priorities, to track the different uh, block integrity flags, or track uh, BIO flags, uh, things like that. So you cannot do anything, and there is no way uh, you can go ahead and build a file system without having support from block trace. Because we've tried it, and without the support of block trace, it's just a nightmare to just get the data out. And if you have, if, if you have system running, if you want to get a live trace, uh, it's just pure nightmare to, to get the data out. So uh, what we're doing is. Uh, we're adding support uh, track the priority. We're adding a bunch of uh, new IOCTLs, which will uh, which will introduce new structures, so you can track more request types. Uh, you can have ability to track uh, integrity fields, which are necessary when you have uh, device formatted with metadata, and you're using diff uh, uh, and dix uh, sort of uh, integrity, which gets attached to every BIO. Uh, and a request. And then uh, you can also trace more actions. Uh, as of now, uh, actions that you can trace are present in here. Like these are the actions you can, you, you can, you can trace. Uh, based on your need, you can, uh, with these new, new, new features, you can add more actions. Because the blocker has why do we change since the introduction of the block trace now? Initially, block layer has single queue, but now it comes with a bunch of software queues and a bunch of hardware queues. Uh, like for NVMe device, NVMe driver, we have one hardware queue, and then you have a bunch of software queues sitting on each CPU. So that kind of uh, one complicates the overall scenario when it comes to debugging and tracing each I.O. Uh, so, yeah, we are looking at that, how we can add more information about the software queues, that's what they call, uh, and more information for the hardware context um, based on how we monitor the uh, request queue. Uh, we are adding ability to uh, track the priority, which is important when you are using uh, scheduler for your devices, uh, such as uh, uh, BFQ, which uses uh, priority, uh, and then obviously more uh, more information, more information about the requests and the IOs. So we posted uh, RFC uh, back in June. Uh, we got some feedback and have, have made some changes. Still waiting for some feedback. Last Sunday, I posted another RFC 
with the latest changes um, from the kernel. And now you can, you can see that. Is it visible now? Okay, now you can see that uh, you can track. This is, uh, this is an example of uh, using priority mask uh, and just iterating over the different priority mask and just filtering the zone reset operation, uh, going into the zone device. So you can see all the operations nicely along with the priority. Uh, you can also track uh, right zeros operation, which which was not uh, possible before before this RFC. So this is just an update. Uh, if any one of you are uh, using block devices heavily, and if they want any more information uh, going into block trace, please please let me know. I'll be happy to add that support uh, and just spin up the RFC and send up into the mailbox. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any, any questions? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, as maintainer of uh, the LTTNG modules kernel tracer, I'm very interested in the additional instrumentation trace points you're adding to the kernel uh, for them. Uh, I suspect you're adding some, right? Yeah, so there are a couple of in discussion. We don't have any kernel trace points in the integrity code. Uh, we don't have any trace points in scheduler. That's what we want to add. Because right now the code just goes through the traditional block layer and all the trace points, if, uh, if you can see, they are all inside the block layer. But for devices such as zone devices or the new, new upcoming devices such as computational storage devices, then you're going to need a trace point at different places because they don't operate as traditional block layer. And as you can see, the presentation from 2006 is still you, you can use because nothing much has changed. But block layer has changed significantly, but I don't think so anybody has ever looked into the block layer scope uh, to modify at least things. Yeah. Because, and I can see this as a separate effort, I mean, one is the instrumentation effort, and this one is really lo a lot of work, and you need to get the approval of all the player maintainers. Yeah. And the other one is uh, the tooling part. Yes. Uh, and in terms of tooling, one thing to keep in mind, I, I remember, I don't know if it's still like this uh, for the blood layer instrumentation, but at some point, uh, you had to kind of echo into a specific file to enable tagging of the struct PIO, so you could follow what's happening. I don't know if it's still like this now, but it would be good if it gets kind of automated as soon as one tracer registers to the trace points, that this gets enabled automatically. Yeah, so right now the way code is written for the block there, you can just register one tracer uh, per queue. Uh, so I'm kind of changing that, I'm in the middle of changing that. Uh, we should be able to register multiple tracers, whether it's extension tracer or the regular tracer. Uh, as a part of this, I'm also updating the F trace code, which is also part of block trace code, <coughs> and which is actually very easy to be very honest, but I don't think so anybody in the world will be done. But uh, the things based on trace points, they support. They already support multiple tracers. So you can use LTTNG while you use Ftrace and others. So it, it's good if, I mean, we keep that in mind that there are yeah. many users of that uh, instrumentation. Yeah, and that's why it's taking uh, a lot of time to get it reviewed by everybody. The initial RFC, you can see that it had, um, it had 48 patches because the code is itself written in a mind that nothing's ever, we're not gonna need anything like this. Uh, and we are fine. So everything revolves around one structure and one item. That's it. There is no room for adding more, uh, there's no room for extension. So at this point, the only way for us to go forward is to add new items, new structures carefully so that they can be extended in future if necessary. So for now, uh, in the existing block trace code, there are only 16 bits and all are gone by all the requests. So you literally cannot do anything about the new request. Uh, now imagine if you're a file system developer and you want, you want to trace these weird operations which are coming to block layer, like zoom up in, which is a very, very different operation, where you just write and then you get the LDA where the data is written and write happens automatically in the device. And imagine if you don't have any tracing, 
that you all, every time you have to do anything, you just have to add green case, come back promo, and then uh, go from there. It's just really not way to go about it. But if you come to the third, uh, just piggybacking on F trace or other tracers rather than extending, uh, uh, because does BLT trace uh, just uh, do the, the, the heavy lifting be done by F trace or it uh, re, re implements part of it? Uh, the BLT trace re implements a lot of things. The F trace, uh, uh, Block Trace has this one API, uh, BLK Trace, Fill, or Wait, Write, Buffers, which is very straightforward. You just go and update the uh, update the string buffer for each request OB, and you're done. And then you can get those get that output into the F Trace. But when you start using the Block Trace framework, which has been deployed heavily everywhere, it's been used along with the other tools uh, like BTT or and whatnot to, to calculate uh, latencies and uh, IO Watcher or latency seeker, which are built around those blockers and not the F trace, then you have to just go through this hard way. But I mean, the ABIs you choose to expose to user space, I mean, that's the main concern that the kernel maintainers will have. Yeah. So if you can just reuse an existing tracer rather than extend an ABI that seems to have limitations, Perhaps it's going to be uh, yeah, that's, that's, easier that's, to access. No, that's why we cannot do it because the existing tracer is built around the structure which has very limited storage in it. So you cannot track more block trace actions or more block, block trace category quickness. And that's the reason you have to go through the, the new one. Yeah, I mean, it's been a couple of decades <laughs> since somebody has written this code. But I think it's, it's, it's about time update this and I'll be happy to take any input if you guys have and risk in the RFC. Yeah. Cool, thank you for the presentation and update. Um, Matthew basically beat me to it, but I just want to second that, that if there's any way to separate the instrumentation um, from using it, that would be awesome. Because like as you showed in the diagram that we've all seen, um, a lot of these tools are awesome. They tend to focus on one subsystem and having an uh, end, end system view or being able to mix and match those at the end is, is very useful. So um, yeah, if you can instrument it once and use it in a variety of frameworks, that would be awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.